All right, shalom, family. All right, so this is going to be a uh, a continuance from my last video I just did uh, about who Esau is, because now I'm going to go to a different. I'm going to go into a different category. It's the same thing, but uh, I have to do it in a separate part because uh, now I'm associating different facts. Okay, so now we're going to start with uh, first. We're going to get back to this uh, tales. 25% of white people are born with tails. Okay? Now, how does this happen? How does this happen? Now, it's not just white people. It's also Asians, too. Asians are also born with... They grow horns and tails. Alright? Now, what they don't tell you is that a lot of them are... Uh, are... Uh, are... cut off when they're born. Look at this Edomite right here. Well, F, I got ripped off. I want my tail. Check this out. Look what they're saying. I found out later in life I had one, but there's a reason they cut it off. They are barely even tails in the sense of the word, more like a floppy tube of skin that is rarely long at all. Sounds like a penis. Notice this severed tail. You see? So these Edomites are all are admitting that they were born with tails. They cut it off when they're children to hide it from you. Now the question is, how does this happen? How how do they grow tails and horns? That's that's unbelievable. Now, let me start let me start off small. We're gonna go the Neanderthal DNA. Okay? Watch this. Let's see if we can uh, uh get something. Okay? Europeans Europeans, Neanderthal, DNA. Alright, let's just see what that brings up. <clears throat> Alright, let's click the first one. Let's see what it says. Alright. Neanderthal ancestry in Europeans unchanged for the last 45,000 years. See, this 45,000... So you gotta use discernment. We know that the earth, uh, uh, you know, it's not forty-five thousand years. All right. So Neanderthal DNA reports that Neanderthal ancestry in Europe likely experienced a quick purge from the modern humans' genomes, but then held steady since then. So it's saying that somewhere along the line, Europeans got Neanderthal DNA. Hmm. Ain't that something? All right. So you can uh uh <laughs> you can Google this stuff yourself, but let's get another one. All right. Let me get something else. And you can uh start start researching, you know, on this uh, on this stuff yourself. All right. Now check this one out. Neanderthal sex could explain why Europeans and Africans have different immune systems. Now, what this is saying is <laughs> the Europeans have the, the Neanderthal gene. Black people don't. Alright? Black people don't have the Neanderthal gene. Europeans do. And a lot of Native, and a lot of Native Americans have it too because, because a lot of them are mixed with Edomites. Okay? They're mixed with Edomites. So they have the serpent seed now. Now. Watch this. This is where it gets very, very tricky right here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> now if you look in your um, in the book of Daniel, let me get that real quick. Let me get the book of Daniel. <clears throat> let me get the book of Daniel. Now we're gonna get Daniel uh, two two forty 
Daniel 2, 43. We do KJV. All right. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So this is the last day. This is a prediction with, that Daniel uh, uh, prophesied that in the last days, that these fallen angels would mingle their, their selves with the seed of man, and they would not cleave to each other. All right? So this is what's happening right here. You have a lot of humanoids. They're not even human. They're not even human. All right, let's go hue. Let's see the definition of hue, okay? And then I'll get to the uh, the uh, evidence, all right? Let's go hue. Let's look up definition of hue. Hue definition. A color or a shade. All right, so if you, so if you say hue man, it means a human, a man of color. Now, if you don't have any color... You don't have, you're not a human. Alright? Simple as that. So you see where I'm going with this here, right? In the last days, they will be mixed with Mari clay. Now, now, I can even go to you where Esau, Esau, had, Esau has been made bare. Look at this. Esau, Esau's seed is spoiled. Esau's seed is spoiled, and this is why his seed is spoiled, because he mixed with the Horites. He mixed with the Horites, and now his seed is spoiled. He has a serpent seed, and now his skin is wax pale. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret place, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. So this is telling you once again that Esau is bare. He's bare. That means his, the melanin of his skin, he's uncovered. You can see exactly who he is now. You can see his, his blood through his skin because his seed is spoiled. His seed is spoiled. He's mingled with the Horites. The Horites are the grandchildren of a fallen angel named Azazel. Okay? Now, this is going to be hard for people to understand because a lot of these brothers don't like to deal with these books. You know, with the book of Enoch and Jasher and Jubilees. They don't like to deal with this stuff, but we're going to deal with it. Okay, now let's go to some documents that I have that I created here. All right, now I printed these out from a book called The Names the Names They Call Us. Okay, now we're going to go here. We're going to go Genesis 36, 6 through 9. Okay, we're going to go Genesis 36 through 9. All right, so we're going to get this. And now we're going to go back to Genesis. Where, where do I have Genesis? Okay, Genesis. Genesis 36, 6 through 9. All right. Okay, now, and Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle. And all his beasts and all his substance which he had got in the land of Canaan and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than they than they might dwell together, and the land where they strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. Okay, so you see where I'm heading with this now. Esau went to Mount Seir. Alright? So he conquered those people. So now let's get Deuteronomy uh, 2, 10-12. Okay? Deuteronomy, uh, uh, Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 2, 10-12. Ten through twelve. All right. The Im 
demons dwelt there in times past, a a people great and many and tall, and the, and the Anakims, which also were counted giants as Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emmons. The Horems also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of, of his possession, which the Lord gave unto him. So you see right here the Horems, this means also the Horites. Okay? And and you see there right here starts off with the Ms dwelt in dwelt therein in times past. A people great and many and tall as the Anakims, which were Nephilims, which also were accounted giants. Okay? As the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emmons. Emmons. Okay? The Horms also dwelt in Seir before time. Alright, so 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 as you see, these people dwell in the land of these giants and these and these uh, these mingled seeds uh, creations. They got these they got to be these creations because their grand their great grandfathers were fallen angels and they were children of of the days of Enoch when the watchers came down and made it with, with the daughters of men. And now the Horites, the Horites were the descendants of them, and Esau conquered them. But the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead. All right, so Esau conquered the Horites. Now before the Horites, it was the Anims, the Anakims. These were fall. These were children of fallen angels. These were not real people. All right, these are these are creations from the book of Enoch when the watchers came down and made it with humans and bore giants and, and wicked uh, creatures, half goats, all this, all that type of stuff. All right, so now you see where I'm going with this. Esau conquered them. And when you conquer someone, what do you do? You sleep with their women. You sleep with their women. Moab and Esau were on, on, on each sides of the mountain. Esau was on, was on the west. Moab was on the east. I mean, I'm sorry. Esau was on the east. Moab was on the west. So they both mixed with these people. And that's why today they grow tails and horns and have wax pale skin. Alright. Now, this is not it. This ain't it. I'm going to keep going. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Now, we're going to go Genesis 36, 20 through 21. Alright. We're going to go Genesis. Genesis. <clears throat> All right, when I say here 36, 20 to 21. This is 6, 20 through 21. All right. Now, listen to this. These are the sons of Seir the Horite who inhabited the land, Lotan. Shobal, Zibion, and Anna. Hold on, that's that's not what it skipped the whole thing. It's supposed to go to 21. Let's see. Here we go. Let's just get the whole thing. Alright. <clears throat> These are the sons of Esau. Who is Edom? And these are their dukes. Now what people call themselves dukes today? You don't hear black people calling themselves dukes. Dukes, you don't hear no other uh, uh, race of people calling themselves dukes except for these white folks. And so you know they are the Edomites. These are the sons of Seir, the Horai, who inhabited the land, Lotan and Shabal and Zibion and Anna, all land of the, of the seed of the fallen angels. These people or these creatures were subjected to the mountains, to, to mountains. They could not go down and dwell with the regular people after that. They were all hidden in the mountains and in the forest. And they're still doing that today. Alright. And Dishon and Izzer and Dishon. These are the dukes of the Horites. Once again the word dukes. All you got to do is just look up dukes. No one else calls themselves dukes except for them. Alright. The children of Seir in the land of Edom. And the children of Lotan were Hori and Herman. And Lotan's sister was Tina. And the children of Shobal were these. Alright. Now let's keep going until we find 
Dishon. Okay? And these are the children of Zibian, both Aha and Ana. This was the Ana, the founder of the mules in the wilderness. That Enough that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibian his father. And the children of Anna were these, Dishon. All right, now, you keep seeing this word, Dishon, 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 Dishon. Okay, let's get it. Dishon. All right. Now, this is this is a, a, a book with Hebrew names from animals. All right. So now we're going to go view. We're going to go zoom in and look what that says. Dishon. Dishan. A wild goat. Good climber, Dishon, and Ezer, and Dishan, they are the dukes of the Horites. Horite dukes, mountaineer leaders, leaders, very appropriate. Jail, wild goat kid, like a runaway. Alright, Aran. Okay, look, Aran. Okay, they're all here. They're all here. Look, the children of Dishan are these, Uz, and Aran. These are the dukes that came of the Horites. Duke Lotan, Duke Shabal, Duke Zibion, Duke Anna, Duke Dashan, Duke Ezer, Duke Dishan. These are the dukes that came of Hori among the dukes in the land of Seir. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. So you see, Esau conquered the land of the children of the fallen angels' offspring. So now he mixed with them and his seed became spoiled. Now, let me show you how how uh, how the how the how the skin becomes white. Okay, I'm gonna prove that to you. Okay? Now if you look here, if you look here, Azazel. Look, this this is a fallen angel, Azazel. You can look this up if you want. Azazel, goat that went from God. The escape goat from 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 genes, a goat azal to go first written, Janazo. It is strong city, elegantly applied to Milton to stand and bear of the apostate angels. He was he was too scholarly to have azazel in heaven. So if you see here, what's happening is this fallen angel was the goat god, and those. People living in Mount Seir or creatures living in Mount Seir were the were the offspring of this fallen angel. Alright? Now it's that's 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 hard for people to get, trust me. I <laughs> I understand. I understand it. Now I got a few scriptures next to it, so I guess we can get them. Let's go Enoch uh let's go Enoch uh eight one. Let's go Enoch eight one. Alright. Eight now these books are, are, are sometimes they're hard to get because they try their best to get rid of these books. More, moreover, Azazel taught men to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, the fabrication of mirrors, and the workmanship of braces, ornaments, the use of the paint, the beautifying of the eyebrows, the use of stones of every valuable and select kind, and all sorts of dyes so that the world, so that the world became altered. And piety increased, fornication multiplied, and they transgressed and corrupted all their ways. Alright, so this right here is the same fallen angel right here. This is the grandfather or the ancestor of the Horites. They came down and mixed with the son of man. And this guy created goat people. He created goat people. Alright. Zazel, the goat that went from God. The escaped goat. Alright. He is the father, or he is the ancestor, the great-great-grandfather of the Horites. And Esau conquered the Horites. Alright? Now, let's get, uh, let me get a, a passage from the book of Enoch uh, that shows Noah being born. So we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to Enoch 106. I'm going to go here, book Enoch 106. Book Enoch 106. Let's see if it's here. Book 106. Oh, let's go to 105. Here it is, 105. After a time, my son 
Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child. The, now this is the birth of Enoch. Okay, this is the birth of Enoch. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child, the flesh of which was as white as snow and as red as a rose. That means he was an albino, the hair of whose head was white like wool and long. So he still had woolly hair. All right, he was just, he was just white and long and whose eyes were beautiful. When he opened them, he illuminated all the house like the sun, the whole house abound with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, opening also his mouth, he spoke to the Lord of Righteousness. Then Lamech, his father, was afraid of him. You see that? So, so Noah's father was afraid. His son was born white. So he was scared. He was scared because his son was, was, was born white. Now that tells you the color of the people. This tells you the color of the actual people if they were scared that the son was born white then that means the other the 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 normal or the natural color of the people were dark skinned people because you were born white that's an that's a anomaly right there they're scared and let's keep going then Lamech his father was afraid of him and flying away came to his to his own father Medusala and said I have begotten a son unlike to the children he is not human huh look at that he is not human my son is not human because he is born white Huh. But resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven. You see that? So now I'm saying right here, Medusalah went to his father and said, Hey, listen, my son is born white. He don't look like us. He looked like the he looked like the offspring of the of the fallen angels. It is he, he is of a different nature from ours, being altogether unlike to us. His eyes are bright as the rays of the sun. His countenance glorious. And he looks not as he belonged to me, but to the angels. I am afraid lest something miraculous should take place on earth in his days. So now he's going and telling his father, Hey, listen, my son is born white. He looks like, he looks like he's one of the children from the fallen angels. Alright? Because he was born white with pale skin. Alright? And now, my father, let me treat and request to you to go to our progenitor Enoch. So now he had to go to his grandfather Enoch and to learn from him the truth for his resonance is with his angels. So Enoch already got taken up. So now he got to go and, and ask his grandfather, hey grandfather, my son is born white. Can you please uh, uh, tell me what's going on because this is crazy. All right. When Methuselah heard the words of his son, he came to me in the extremities of the earth for he had been informed that I was there and he cried out. I heard his voice and went up to you saying, behold, I am here, my son, since thou art come to me. He answered and said, On account of a great event have I come to thee, and on account of a sight difficult to be comprehended have I approached thee. And now, my father, hear me, for my son Lamech, a child has been born, who resembles not him, and whose nature is not like the nature of a man. His color is whiter than snow. He is redder than the rose. The hair of his head is whiter than white wool. His eyes are like the rays of the sun, and when he opened them, he illuminated the whole house. When also he was taken from the hand of the midwife, he opened his mouth and blessed the Lord of heaven. His father Lamech feared and fled to me, believing not that the child belonged to him, but that he resembled the angels of heaven. And behold, I am come to thee, that thou mightest point out to me the truth. Then I, Enoch, answered and said, the Lord will effect a new thing upon the earth, this, this have. I explain, and seen in a vision, I have shown thee that in the generations of Jared, my father, who, those who were from heaven, disregarded the word of the Lord. Behold, they committed crimes. I laid aside their class and, in, and intermingled with women. With them also they transgressed, married with them, and begot children. And destruction, therefore shall come upon all the earth a deluge and a great destruction shall take place in one year so now he's saying he's giving a prophecy of what's going to happen in the days of noah his uh uh the son that was born pale so as you can see just from the scripture right here noah was an albino he was born pale skin he still had white woolly hair he still had woolly hair just like the albinos but he was born pale skin. He was very, very white. And the hope and his dad was scared. His dad was scared 
because he thought that he resembled one of the fallen angels. So he had to go uh, uh, inquire to his grandfather Enoch and say, hey, what's going on with my son? He's born white. And everyone knows that if, that the children of the fallen angels are pale skinned. All right. So that's that's what I'm, uh, uh, I'm telling you here. All right. You can research this on your own. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 105. This is uh, this is the birth of uh, the birth of Enoch. All right. Now we're gonna get uh, the book of Jasher. I, I read this already, so uh, let me read it again. I read it in the last video. So we're gonna get Jasher 61:15. Now I'm gonna prove to you again. That in those days, and even in these days, there are this stuff lasts now. This this stuff is is out right now. Just that people are so blind to it. A lot of people who you walk around today aren't real humans. They're actually the serpent seed. Okay. Now let me prove to you that in the scriptures, these type of things existed. This is Joshua sixty one fifteen, and Zephyr went and he saw, and behold, there was a large cave at the bottom of the mountain, and there was a great stone at the entrance of the cave, and Zephyr spit the stone. And he came into the cave, and he looked, and behold, a large animal was devouring the ox. From the middle upward, it resembled a man, and from the middle downward, it resembled an animal. And Zepho rose up against the animal and slew it with his swords. So, it's telling you right here, there is an animal that resembled a man, and the bottom of it resembled an animal. Alright, so this stuff existed. It existed then, and it exists today. Just because you can't see it. On TV doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You actually see these people walking around you every single day. Alright? They're walking around you every single day. Alright? Now let's get another one. Let's get something else here. Uh, I'm going to end it off. I hope I hope this is, you know, I hope this is good enough for you. Oh, you know what? Let me get one more thing to prove to you. To prove to you, uh, again, who Esau is. So Esau has mingled himself with, with the serpent seed. And, and has become wax pale. All right. So this is a a, a, a continuance from my last video. All right. So now we're going to get Genesis. Uh, we're going to go. To, we're going to go to Genesis again. And this time we're going to get Genesis uh, three. We're going to get Genesis three fifteen. Genesis three. Genesis three fifteen. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow that thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, curses the ground. For thy sake, in the in, in sorrow shall thou eat of it all days for your life. All right. Actually, that's not even the uh, scripture I was trying to get. All right. That's the that's the wrong one. All right. So let's get uh, Ezekiel. Sorry for that one. Let's get Ezekiel. <clears throat> We're gonna go Ezekiel 35, and then I'm gonna end it off with two main scriptures linking uh, who Esau really is. All right. Actually, actually, we're just gonna go Ezekiel twenty-eight. Ezekiel twenty-eight. Ezekiel twenty-eight, eleven to sixteen. Then I'm gonna get uh, Amos. Amos one through nine. Well, nine through eleven. All right. So Ezekiel uh, here. Okay. Now, uh, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, God, thou sellest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, who's that, huh? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Mm. So the king of Tyre, the king of Tyrus, has, was perfect in beauty, and has been in the garden of Eden. Wow, okay. Every precious stone was like covering, the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the worksmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee, the day of thou was created. Hmm. 
So now, so now the king of Tyre was created, and he was, uh, and he was ordained with these, all these precious stones. That sounds like an angel to me. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Anointed cherub. Huh. What's a cherub? All right. Let's look up cherub. Let's see what cherub is. All right. Because a lot of people don't know this type of stuff. Once it gets into, you know, you know, into these, into these spiritual things, it it throws people off. Okay. Because you were taught your, your, your whole life that all this stuff is ancient mythology. That all these angels and these freaking dragons and these half goat people are all a lie. And even a lot of Hebrew brothers can't understand this stuff. They can't get it. But the scriptures don't lie. Okay? A winged angelic being described in biblical tradition as attending on God. It is represented in ancient Middle Eastern art as a lion or a bull with eagles wings and human face and regarded in traditional Christian angelology as an angel of the second highest order of the ninefold celestial hierarchy all right so now you see what I'm talking about so now the scripture is saying thou art the anointed cherub that covereth and I have set thee so thou was upon the holy mountain of God thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till an iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So you see that that right that that right there is the devil. That's Hashatan right there. So he is the covering cherub. He's the king of Tyre, of Tyrus. The king of Tyrus. So he's actually a king of Tyrus. Now watch this. Let's go to Amos. <clears throat> Let's go to Amos. Let's see. I'm trying to get. Here it is. Here it is right here. Alright. Amos. Thus said the Lord. For thee, for three transgressions of Tyrus. So once again you see the king of Tyrus. The transgressions of Tyrus. And for the four I will not turn away the punishment thereof. So they did three transgressions of Tyrus, and then for the fourth one, the Most High said, that's enough. I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to who? To Edom. To Edom. The king of Tyrus delivered up the captivity to Edom. Now who has us in captivity? Edom. And remembered not the brotherly covenant. So as you see right here, Esau is our brother. He is our brother. Because that's why the Most High is pissed at him. And he's about to catch these plagues. Or he's catching these plagues right now. Because he forgot the brotherly covenant. He went along with the devil. The devil ordained him because that's his seed. And he didn't remember the brotherly covenant. And he, and, and he took the captivity of Israel. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the places thereof. Okay, now this is linking Edom to the king of Tyrus, which is the devil, the anointed cherub, right here. I'll give it to you again right here. The anointed cherub. Okay, the anointed, thou art, thou art the anointed cherub. Okay, cherub. A winged angelic being. So the king of Tyrus was a cherub and the and the king of Tyrus gave the captivity to Edom for the I will not turn away the punishment there because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom so you know who the Edomites are now all right now let me get one more one more scripture one more scripture one more scripture everyone knows this one Ye are of your father the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him, when he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. So as you see, these Edomites, their father is the devil. They have his seed. They have his seed. They have the serpent seed in their bloodline. They, it's called the Neanderthal gene. They call it the Neanderthal gene. And they try to uh, 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 
you know, make it science and oh, the, you know, the Neanderthals. But what it really was, or what it really is, is that Esau mixed with the Horites. And the Horites were offspring of the fallen angels. That's why they are born with tails, and that's why they grow horns. Alright? Now, I hope that wasn't too much for you, because, let me get it back again, okay? 25% of, of Edomites are born with tails, alright? So, I hope you got some from this. I hope this answers a lot of questions. Uh, if, you know, if there's any more questions, ask a question, you know. I'm not trying to offend anybody with this information. You know, I hope it's not too crazy because... For some people because you know this is some stuff right here trust me and when I start uh, finding this stuff out I'm like whoa let me sit back for a little bit and most people can't handle this type of information so I understand if it sounds crazy trust me I understand it I understand because I was there too but the only way to understand these things you got to get into the scriptures and you get and you got to you got to pray to the most high and he'll show you he'll show you what's going on here all right uh, if you like the video share it with somebody uh, you know, like it, dislike it, you know, whatever you want to do. You know, I'm not doing this stuff for likes or, you know, I'm just trying to get the, uh, this, this information out to people because you got to understand who we're dealing with. We're dealing with a people who, who, uh, who are like animals, you know, they go and they, 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 uh, they kill people, you know, they, you know, I mean, watch this, you know, just, you know, real quick, they, uh, 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 they take pictures with lions and 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 uh, and uh, and they kill elephants and they take pictures with them. Like who does that? Like who does that? I think Trump's sons, Trump's sons uh, killed a lion and they took a picture with it and they're laughing and they took a uh, uh, picture. Look at this. Look at this. Who does this? Who does this? What people are you seeing who do this? You don't see no black people doing this. It's all Edomites. They are hunters. They are great hunters. Just like it says in the scriptures. They are hunters. They kill for sport. They have no empathy. Like who can, who could do this? Who could do that? I could not imagine killing that creature. That's the most highest. Why would I kill a giraffe and take a picture with it? That's. That's just, it's sad, man. It's sad. So you got to understand who we're dealing with. They don't have empathy. They don't have this type of feeling that we have for, for humans or, 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 or for creatures. I couldn't kill a lion like this and take a picture of it. I couldn't do this. I don't see no black people, no Israelites doing this. We don't do this type of stuff. That's because we are human. We are the humans. These people are savages. They kill for sport. That's why they have no problem killing us in the street. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He, this guy could not kill this lion with his bare hands. But instead, he went and, and is in a wheelchair and he shot the lion and killed it. And, now take, and they're laughing. Look at this. He act like he accomplished something great. And the lady in the back is laughing. Who, who can do that? Who does that? Esau does that. He's a great and cunning hunter. That's how you know who Esau is, okay? All right, man. I hope you guys. I hope you got some from this. Shalom.